Good morning and welcome to another episode of EXP Commercial Explained. My name is Lindy McNeese and I'm here again with the great Dr. Bill Nieves. He's our designated managing broker out of Utah as well as our senior principal broker here at EXP Commercial. We are here to talk about an amazing broker that we have with us, Isaac Romero. We're so excited to be able to have you here with us today. You know, super excited that you've decided to join EXP Commercial and we would love to just talk to you about you, right? We want to hear we want to hear all about your story and everybody's always so excited to learn the the things that that convince people, you know, what why they're finally convinced or why they're sold really on coming over to EXP Commercial. So, welcome Isaac. Super excited to have you today. Well, wonderful. Thank you so much. I'm uh, happy to be here. Glad to be asked to uh, to share some stories and promote EXP Commercial and 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 share a little about <clears throat> what got me started. Um, so I'll just kind of dive in to start there, which um, so I'll say I got my start probably about six, seven years ago or so. Um, my uncle, um, who never went to college was my inspiration for getting into real estate, I'll tell you. He oh, he didn't go to college, nothing like that, graduated high school, but he lived in this really nice house in the North Valley of Albuquerque. And I was always curious about, well, how does that happen? I'm, I'm told I need to go to college, get the degree, get the job in order to have something like that. Well, the more I talked with him, I learned that he had grown a uh, an apartment real estate holdings portfolio and I got curious about that. And so after I graduated college, um, I went and worked for the state government, um, one of the top budget analyst agencies there, and got curious about it. And so I started digging into the FHA first time home buyer, learned that I can leverage that product to buy a fourplex. And I did that in 2020, I'm sorry, in 2018. And that really got me going because I looked at the settlement statement and I saw how much the broker made after 30 days of work. And I thought, wait, 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 I'm the one that did all the analysis. I'm the one that had to do all the research, learn about net operating incomes and cap rates and cash on cash returns, IR, et cetera. I did all that research. My, my agent at the time didn't really know about that. I self-taught and I was like, you know what? I want to help more people like this do this. And that really pushed me to go and get my license. I had no idea what I was going to do with my license. I just knew I needed to go get it. And so I went and got my license and continued working at the uh, the state agency for a period of time. And then I had built some relationships with many of the legislators. And one of them I had told, hey, I got my license. And he said, hey, you need to talk to my broker because uh, he's in business too. And he connected me and I ended up going to work for uh, the local NEI branch here. And that's where I got my start as a transaction coordinator, learned the business there for about a year, then transitioned to become a full-time broker, um, did that for a while. Uh, I started off in multifamily, but then transitioned into retail leasing and investment sales. And that's where I focus my business now. Um, but then I heard, and I'd always been curious about the EXP Realty model. And then I heard that there was an EXP commercial model that, that followed the same thing. And one of the things that I, I realized that I really enjoyed what, or appreciated about EXP, the EXP model is the flexibility. I was going to be able to have a lot more opportunity to say where my dollars went in growing my business rather than not having that kind of flexibility or uh, say um, and creative out, outlook on those. And so that's kind of why I got into um, EXP. You know, I love hearing when people accident themselves into real estate, right? And it's it happens quite often, just like your, you know, your story. People have, you know, backgrounds working in certain industries, They're, they have office jobs, they have something, and then they just meet somebody and it's like, wait a minute, hey, that sounds, 
fun, you know, and clearly somebody like you, you, you must like math, right? Because getting into commercial real estate, you have to be a math person, you know, to be able to do that. Well, I, you know, and again, I, I love hearing this and I, I'm super, you know, we're super excited that you're here with us. Dr. Bale, I'm sure that you've got some really interesting questions to ask him after learning a little bit more about the background here. Yeah. Yeah. I just pulled him up too. You have a CCIM too, right, Isaac? Yeah, that's right. I got it uh, October 22, I believe. Yep. Well, congrats. Fantastic. So you, you know, your way around the industry a little bit. Good. Yeah, quite a bit. So, yeah. So I hear it like, you know, you started out multifamily, right? That's what I'm hearing, you know, the fourplex. And then you turn your interest into uh, leasing and investments. So with the multifamily family getting up to the leasing investments, what opportunities do you see for growth and collaboration within the eXp Commercial Network? Yeah, no, good question. Um, one of the things I, I really like are the um, the special the industry or the specialty committees that we have going. Uh, so, for example, I'm a part of the net lease committee. Uh, one of the team members that I've recruited and, and am helping nurture, she wants to focus on multifamily, so she's joined the multifamily committee, and it's a really nice monthly meetup where we get to talk about what's happening in that field or that segment of commercial real estate and really hone in and ask those hard questions. What's going on with interest rates? Are we seeing cap rates change? What about certain users or businesses is happening? Um, you know, how does, a, how does a stock affect a cap rate value, et cetera? Um, really, really good conversations there. And then having that workplace group where we can just ask our questions outside of those recurring meetings and have them uh, asked and answered, collaborate and, and keep the conversation going uh, in perpetuity. I, I think that's a really great opportunity and value that we have uh, with eXp Commercial. That's fantastic. And you've been here for a little bit. You're, you're deep diving into the committees. You're collaborating, connecting with other CCIM members, I'm sure, and other, you know, power agents here. So you know, so you come from a different brokerage, you've been around, you, you felt out the industry. So can you explain to everybody like what sets eXp commercial apart from other brokerages, brokerages in the industry? Yeah, absolutely. You know, one of the things, and I, I touched on this just a little while ago, the biggest thing for me was just the flexibility. You know, when we, when we pair a 80, 20 split with a $20,000 cap and those fees can get capped with the opportunity of iconing and getting that back all in company stock, there's no there's no one else that's doing anything like that. And then the other thing is with a twenty thousand dollar cap, again, I have the flexibility to say, hey, listen, you know, with my previous you know previous companies or other companies, we might be looking at a 50-50 split to start, and maybe that gets scaled back over time based on production. But instead, if I just assumed, hey. I can use that extra 30% or whatever the number is for my business and I can push out more content. I can do more advertising. I can do more ad spend, whatever the spend is to generate scale. I have the flexibility to earn more money overall. And that's kind of where I see the most significant value with eXp commercial is, is just the scalability of it. Not to mention the recruitment aspect of revenue share where you can scale kind of education, recruitment, uh, supporting younger brokers getting into that business. And, and then other than, you know, perhaps a team split, you know, there's still ref share. And I really like that opportunity. Yeah, a lot of times people say, you know, in the commercial world, having the rev share is, is you know, it's it's such a, a great extra added, you know, just piece, you know, as well as over on the EXP Realty side. Like it's such a, you know, you can have multiple avenue uh, streams of revenue here, you know, other uh, passive income and, you know, rev that's one of them, revenue share. Then you have stock, right, that you can yeah. join into the agent equity program, which is really a smart thing to do. Um, so always good to think about that. You know, I, I um, was thinking, you know, as, as you were talking just a second ago, I'm very curious to, to know, well, and you don't have to tell me, you can just say in figures, right? Because that's a lot of times what we, we ask people. But, you know, you brought up the 20K cap, right? $20,000. Typically, when I talk to commercial brokers that have been in the, bu the business for a while, been in the industry, I'll say, you know, how many figures, 
you know, how many zeros were there that you paid your brokerage, you know, last year before deciding, okay, how much more of that money can I put back into my own business? Right. I mean, we've had people say six figures, you oh, know, absolutely. easily six yeah. figures. Yeah, absolutely. You know, the way, one of the ways that I look at this, um, just looking at other, other models and perhaps even my, my last brokerage is, you know, to get to this similar split that does not have a cap, but just to get to the similar split, I would have had to have paid probably a million and a half dollars before I get to something close to this split. Now, uh, and and that to me, again, I can use that million and a half dollars a whole lot better in my hands to build my business than not having that flexibility. And, and so, yeah, when I look at it that way, we're probably looking at a million and a half to get to the same level that I just walked into EXP with. I mean, what? Seriously, that's a no-brainer, right? <laughs> that's, a, that's, that's a few multi-family no projects, my friend. <laughs> Put yeah. money back into business. And, and that's, yeah. that's, that's one place I'm not afraid to, to spend money is in, back into the business because um, it, it just allows me to generate more business and get build more attention and, and get out there. And, you know, uh, in New Mexico, I was the first and... I guess technically I still am the first EXP commercial broker in the state. And the only three other brokers that are in EXP commercial are brokers that I recruited and I'm nurturing and helping and, and uh, building. And I intend to, you know, kind of stay in that, that front of the, the pack, so to speak for EXP commercial um, while building, building that and sharing the value and, um, you know, going to trade shows, real estate schools, uh, sh sharing just all of this value that I I'm sharing here with you today. Uh, one of the other things that I mentioned al also earlier is uh, I really appreciate the flexibility that eXp commercial offers, where let's say if I decide, which I probably will, I intend to get my license in one, if not two other states, I don't have to go sign up for a new brokerage to do business there. I don't have to worry about new franchise fees or understanding a new system. I get all of my same logins. Everything is pretty much the same. Um, I don't have to learn anything new. I just create a new relationship with the, the you know designated broker and join an association and I can start doing business. That is not something you get, I think, with other companies. It's true. It's the whole one brokerage, not franchise, right? I mean, and there's so many benefits to us being one brokerage, not franchise across the U.S. It allows for interstate co-brokering, right? Portability. Yes. You know, that's, you know, when you talk about franchises, they, they can't do that because they're in their, you know, state specific. And, you know, this, uh, you know, allows our agents to be able to do that. Dr. Bill, you're big in portability. I mean, that's something that you, you know, inside now, you're our subject matter expert on that. That's what I always tell people. Um, yeah. <laughs> this Every has day I answer questions like your baby, about right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. And we know the that baby for what, three years now. <laughs> yeah, because we understand the importance, right? And because sure, we're able to do that. So I love hearing you bring up, you know, just you you do have the ability to also get licensed in other states because, you know, we're, we're one brokerage and there's not all that additional stuff. So Isaac, one of our last questions we always like to ask people, you know, what do you see in the next three to five years? I know you've already mentioned product specialty committees that you're involved in those, which is great. That's something new we launched this year. So yay, stay involved, you know, but you know, what does that look like for you maybe in the next three years or so that you plan to do here at eXp commercial? Yeah, absolutely. You know, the, my, the way I see my trajectory with eXp commercial is to build a team locally here in Albuquerque where I'm, I'm located Albuquerque, New Mexico. Um, but then as I look into these other States, so for example, my mom lives out in Hawaii so I want I want a reason to go visit her more frequently because I don't see her all, as much. So I want to get licensed out in Hawaii so I can go and have a really good reason for for being there other than just seeing my mom, which is a good one in, in and of itself. Um, but also there's so many tools that EXP offers, uh, you know, the, the new platform with Moody's. I, I think that's a phenomenal platform. Um, our local association just actually terminated our relationship, perhaps prematurely. Uh, but now I'm glad that e I get it with eXp commercial because it's a phenomenal data resource for us. And so I intend to leverage all the tools, um, relationships, uh, networking events 
to just build this business and, and, and perhaps have teams in multiple states and uh, just work towards, uh, you know, fulfilling, fulfilling some dreams. I love that. And hey, we know the broker that's currently in Hawaii. So we can hook you up, right. you know, we, <laughs> we know all of them. Right. So yeah, I know, he's a great one at that. So, um, well, Isaac, thanks again so much for being a part of this and coming on and telling your story and letting us hear about you. I love getting to know our agents and brokers and, and this is such a great way to get to do that. Dr. Bill, again, thanks for, you know, doing this with Absolutely. me. One of my favorite co-hosts, right? Yeah, I right. love getting to do this with you. And again, Isaac, thanks. You know, let everybody know that you've, you know, you've, you've done this today. And you know, um, everybody reach out to Isaac. I'm pretty certain that you're on LinkedIn. And you know, reach out to him if you have any questions. I, I love the story, and also being a CCIM, that's huge, right? That's not just something easy to do. Absolutely, yeah. That was an exciting journey in in itself. Yeah. So thanks again, everybody. Please follow us on LinkedIn, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, you name it. We're on it. We would love to have you follow us. You can stay up to date on all of the events that we have going on and can't wait to see you at some of our in real life events. Come hug our neck. We can't wait to see you there. Everybody again, thanks. Have a good rest of your day. We'll see you soon.